All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna look at the fundamental properties of algebra. And when I mean fundamental properties, I mean fundamental properties. Um, there are six properties known as the field axioms, which are the base for everything that we do in algebra. An axiom in mathematics is a property that is accepted without proof, meaning I don't have to show everyone it's true, I just kind of assume it's true. And from there, I build all of algebra. And these, for algebra, the fundamental properties that make algebra work are called field axioms. Now a field is a mathematical construct um, that is uh, a set of objects and two operations defined on that set. And these are, in order for something to be a field, these six um, fundamental properties have to be true. Now, the first three, we just, well, I'm just going to kind of glaze over because we really don't need these in Algebra 1. One is called closure, and all closure says is that the operations uh, work in that set and completely within that set. So if I add a real number to another real number, I get a real number as a result. Or if I multiply two real numbers, I'm going to get a real number as a result. And that's what closure is. So my answer doesn't is not a set outside. So for example, natural numbers and division are not closed because if I take two natural numbers like 1 and 5 and I divide them, 1 divided by 5 is 0.2 and 0.2 is not a natural number. So it's not an answer inside that set so it's not closed. And that's all I'm going to say for closure for algebra 1. If you want to learn more about al closure, you'll learn about that in algebra 2. All right, second thing is that inverses exist. And if you need to put one in a problem, you can put one in a problem. Um, and the inverses are quite literally the opposites. Those are additive inverses, opposites. And reciprocals are the multiplicative inverses. And we're going to use those to solve because sometimes I want to zero out a number on a side or I want to um, you know, turn something into a 1 by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. And that's just that's the field axiom that inverses exist the opposites and the reciprocals. The third one, and you actually have used this one before, is the identity. And identities exist. And identities are things that keep things the same. So the additive identity, the identity for addition, is zero. Because if I add zero to anything, I get the same number. And the multiplicative identity is one. Because I multiply anything by one, I get the same number. Now I say you've used this one before, and you totally have. So here's when you've used it. So let's say I have the fraction problem 1 half plus 1 third, and you know you have to have common denominators, right? So you take 1 half and you multiply it by 3 over 3, and you take 1 third and you multiply it by 2 over 2. Well, hey, what the, what's up with 3 over 3? Well, hey, that's 1. And 2 over 2, what's that? That's 1. So this is when you use the multiplicative identity. Now we don't spend much more time on these right now. We're going to deal with inverses when we have uh, equations to solve. So that's later. Um, right now though, we're going to look at the three field axioms that do come up quite often. The, the super juggernaut field axioms, the ones we're going to use all of the time, the ones that you already use often in your head. And I'm going to put a little squiggle line to emphasize the importance of these field axioms. Four is the associative. And there are two versions of the associative property. There's one of addition, and there's one of multiplication. Each of the operations can associate, um, which means um, that the grouping can change when I'm adding things. So if I have A plus B grouped together, and then I'm going to add on a C, but I realize, you know what, I'd rather add B plus C first, I totally can. And the justification for that is the associative property. I assume in algebra that I can change the grouping when I'm just adding stuff together. So instead of having A and B grouped, I'm going to have B and C grouped together first. And notice it's of addition, not of subtraction. It's got to be all addition, okay? Or all multiplication, because this also works for multiplication. If I have A times B multiplied together, but I really want B times C multiplied together, the associative property of multiplication allows me to do that. So let me give you an example of when you would do these, use these. Okay, so for example, I have x plus 2 as an expression or quantity, and I want to add a 2 onto it. Well, this thing's not simplified for two reasons. First, I got parentheses, and two, I can add, well, 2 and 2. 
But right now the X and the two are grouped together, but I don't want them grouped together. I really want two and two grouped together. So the associated property is what allows me to do that. I can put two and two together and leave the X out there because uh, the associated property allows me to do that. So that's the associated property of addition, and then I can continue and, and simplify that. And I can do the same thing with multiplication. If I have 12 times the quantity 4x, and I'm like, oh no, that's not simplified. I have parentheses, and I can multiply 12 times 4, but they're not together. Whatever will I do? Well, I'm just going to multiply. Um, but I, I have to associate first, because I need to group the 12 and the 4 together, and then slap on that x and multiply it and that is the associative of multiplication. So that allows me to rearrange where the parentheses are when it's addition and multiplication. Notice there's no subtraction or division, it's just addition and multiplication. So that's the first one. This next one though, uh, you use all the time in your head whenever you rearrange numbers. Like if you see a three and a seven and you know that's gonna be 10 and you wanna add them together first. So in your brain you rearrange them. What you are using is the commutative property. And I already mentioned this in class. Um, there are two versions, the of addition, commutative of addition, or the commutative of multiplication. And I mentioned this whenever we would grade those uh, equations or apparent formulas, and I said, hey, if my rule is x times 1.5 and yours is 1.5 times x, it's the same thing. Well, that's the commutative property that allows me to do that. Um, so if I have a plus b, I know that is mathematically equivalent to uh, b plus a. And if I have a times b, it's mathematically equivalent to b times a. And notice it's not subtraction, it's not division. It totally, subtraction does not commute, division does not commute. The only two things that do commute are addition and multiplication. And I use this one more often than, than any of the other field axioms because I need to rearrange things uh, in such a way that I can add them together or multiply them. So if I have two plus x plus three, this expression's not simplified. Two reasons, because the two and the three can be combined and that x needs to be in the front. So in order to put everything where it needs to go, to put the two and the three together so I can substitute, what I have to do is move that x up there. So rewriting it as x plus two plus three is illustration of the commutative property of addition in action, because I just swapped those two things together, or from, with each other. And then the same thing with multiplication. If I have two times x times four, what I really want is the x um, to multiply the two and the four and have a single coefficient with the x behind it. So I need to move that four right there so I can do two times four times x. And this is an example of the commutative of multiplication. And so rearranging where the order, the order of things is the commutative property and you gotta use that all the time. And once again, I'm saying you, you already use it. Um, I just need to make sure that you realize that it's called the commutative property, all right? Now the last one is one that we spend quite a bit of time on because uh, if you're not careful with your signs, you're gonna mess this one up. And the last field axiom is the distributive property. Now there aren't multiple versions of the distributive property because the distributive property combines the two operations that all the other properties had. If you noticed, every single one of these other field axioms, um, like you can be closed under addition or multiplication. You have the additive inverse, the multiplicative inverse. You have the additive identity, the multiplicative identity. You have the association of addition, addition you have the association of multiplication. You have the commutative of addition and the commutative multiplication. What the distributive property does is combines the two operations into a single property. And what the distributive looks like and what it deals with is grouping symbols and multiplication with addition. So if I have a times the quantity of b plus c um, and I can't follow the order of operations and just combine b and c because they're I don't know, maybe a B and a C. Um, what I can do instead to get rid of the parentheses, which is the number one rule for simplified, is that I can multiply A times B and multiply A times C and add them together. And there's only one version of this property. It's A times the quantity B plus C and it gives you AB plus AC. Now sometimes you'll see the A moved back here, um, but that's just the commutative property. And sometimes you see a subtraction there, but that's not really the distributive property. The true distributive property is just this property right here. Now it works in two directions. So if you see AB plus AC, you can totally rewrite it with the parentheses. Um, and that's actually something we call factoring. Now, 
Um, for right now, though, we're going to deal with getting rid of the parentheses and turning it into AB plus AC. And I like to refer to the distributed property as a sprinkling. Cause, because you're like sprinkling the A over the B and the C. Um, so let's see how this property works, just very basic level. Once again, we're going to have entire lessons dedicated to the distributed property and this other thing called combining like terms. And you're going to distribute so often that it's just going to be natural to, to how you do mathematics. All right, so let's see this property. Now, I can totally use the order of operations to simplify this. I can uh, follow the gems or PEMDAS and do 4 plus 7 and get 11 and then multiply it by 3. But I can also distribute. I can say 3 times 4 plus 3 times 7. Now, what I like to do to illustrate the sprinkling is to put little arrows. Shrink, 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 shrink. So I show you that it's 3 times 4 and 3 times 7, which gives you 12 plus 21, or the 33 that we already knew it was. Now, the reason why we need the distributed property is because it's not always a 4 plus a 7 in there. If I change one of those numbers into a variable, I can't combine x and 7 using my order of operations because I don't know what x is. But I still have to get rid of those pesky parentheses. So I'm going to distribute or sprinkle. So 3 times x and 3 times 7. So I get 3 times x plus 3 times 7. And that gets rid of the parentheses, and that's actually the distributed property in action. Now I can further simplify it and say 3x plus 21 to get my box it off happy face answer. But the distributed property is just the property that gets rid of the parentheses, so it's the multiplication. Now you can sprinkle over a lot more than two things. You can have like x plus y plus z plus q plus r plus m plus whatever you want, and you just have to do a bunch of sprinkling. And you can sprinkle when the signs are different, but that's for the distributed property lessons. So in the next few lessons, you're going to see examples of me using all of these properties together to achieve complete simplification. But right now, what I want to make sure that you know is um, the properties we're going to use. Closure, not so much. Uh, I inverses exist, not so much. Identities, eh, maybe if we you know make some common denominators. But the big ones, associative of addition, and multiplication, which means grouping symbol changing their locations. The commutative of addition and multiplication, which means I need to rearrange the order in which things are added or multiplied. And the big daddy, distributive, which is if I have some things added together and then multiplied, I can either add them together and multiply, or I can multiply the pieces and then add. And so those are our major properties. Now with that, we can move on to actually simplifying things.